What's up YouTube? Welcome to your 27th tutorial and this tutorial is on arrays. Now what an array is is pretty much a variable that can store many values in it. So um, it's useful when you want to have a variable that has a bunch of related information. And the thing about an array is that it can only store values of the same data type. So if you want to store a string and an integer in the same um, array, you can't do that. So uh, the easiest way to explain what an array is is just to build it and show you guys how it works and what it does. So I'm going to do just that. The syntax for creating an array is simply, first thing you have to type in is what type of array you want to create. And I want to create an integer array to hold integers, so go ahead and press int. The next thing you do is name your array, and I'm going to name mine Bucky so it doesn't get confused. The next thing you do is put square brackets, and this is right between the P and the backslash on your keyboard. And this is just so the square brackets tell Java that you're going to be working with an array. If you did this, then it would just be a regular variable. But when you put the square brackets in, Java knows, alright, you're about to make an array. The next thing you do is set it equal to new since it's a new array, int again, or whatever um, type of data you're going to store, and square brackets. The only thing different is, inside the second square brackets, you need to put a number in there. And this number indicates how many values or how many variables you're going to store in your single array. So I'm going to store 10 variables, or 10 values, and if you don't know exactly what's going on, I'll show you right now. So now we created an array and it's named Bucky and I told you guys that you can store 10 values in this single array named Bucky and you're saying alright how do I do that? Well since we created a variable or excuse me an array named Bucky we have something called indexes for that array and each index allows us to store a separate value and those indexes begin with 0 and go all the way to 9 and again um, your computer is kind of weird because even though you made 10 elements, it doesn't start 1 and then go to 10. It actually starts 0 to 9 uh, because your computer loves to start counting at 0 for some reason. So our 0 with element in Bucky, which is our first element, we can set it equal to any value. Uh, let's set it equal to 87 so you don't get confused. Next, you go ahead and make your next index or your next element of your array and set this equal to some other value I'll set it equal to 543 and you do this all the way until you get to the last one which is 9 let me just leave a couple out because I don't feel like typing them all and now once you did all of this and you set all your elements of your array equal to value you can use those elements in your array and I'll show you how to use them let's just go ahead and make a system out uh, print statement print line might as well all you can do in order to use this array instead of giving the variable name you just give the name of the array and type whatever index you want to use so if I used Bucky 1 to print out what it would do is say alright what's the value for Bucky 1 543 let's go ahead and run this and look in our run screen 543 so that's how you can use an array and again an array is pretty much a single variable that can hold multiple values depending on what you typed so for example we made this array able to hold 10 values so it was able to hold 10 things I only made 3 right here because I was too lazy but you can make 0 through 9 which would give you 10 and again how you use it just write the name of your array and then write this little subscript that's called an index inside and that's how you reference it, just like you reference a regular variable. Now if you're saying, alright, an array wouldn't be really useful if we needed to type every single variable over and over again. Well, an array comes in handy. Let me get rid of this stuff right here. One of the neat things about an array is you don't have to type 10 variables when making your array. There's another way that you can do this. And let's just go ahead and get uh, rid of everything. Let's tighten this up a little bit. That's what she said. Another thing you can do is make something called an array initializer. And what this does is it initializes all your arrays without having to type 
the array name, subscript value, array one, subscript value, array two, subscript, blah, blah, blah. it gets hard to even say. So here's how you make an array initializer. Go ahead and type um, what type of array you want. Bucky, and again, don't forget to square bracket so it knows we're working with array. But instead of typing new int 10, what you can do is just simply add um, those little curly bracket things and go ahead and begin typing numbers in here. Two, four, five, seven, nine. And what this does is instead of having to tell um, your array how many values you want to store in it, it automatically counts how many values you put in and assigns a scu uh, excuse me a subscript to each one of those. So instead of putting Bucky zero equals two, Bucky one equals four, Bucky two equals five, Bucky three equals seven, Bucky four equals nine, it automatically does that for you in this entire statement. So now whenever we use Bucky and say we wanted to use two, again it would be Bucky zero, Bucky one, Bucky two. So Bucky two would be equal to five. So let's see if we got it right. Run it. And as you can see, it outputs the number five. So again, this is a different uh, way that you can create an array using an array initializer. Um, I don't even know what the first thing is called. I guess it's just called um, initializing or creating an array or something. But this is um, how most people do it and create an array initializer. And then you don't have to go through the process of typing bookie zero equals yada, yada, yada. You don't have to do that a million times. All you have to do is type it in a nice little list and it automatically does all the work for you. And again, whenever you want to use one of your values or variables in your array, just write the name of the array and the number. And again, the number is called um, the subscript or index. I usually call it the index or just number. So that is your quick tutorial on arrays and how to create an array and how to also how to make an array initializer. So I hope you enjoyed it, uh, practice this a little bit, and in the next couple of tutorials I'll show you how to use arrays and programs and how they're useful and why they're useful in applications. So thank you guys for watching, don't forget to check out my next tutorial, and I'll see you then.